Here come the Bowers. Y'all ready to go swimming, baby? Come on. Give it up. Get out of that water. I tried telling y'all. It's swim lessons, baby. <laughs> Hey, buddy. Good to see you, bro. <laughs> What's up, Dal? I, uh, I, first off, I want to thank you for doing this, um, specifically here at the Vikings training facility. And uh, on the drive over here, as I was driving over, I couldn't help but think about the first coaching job you and I got. New England Tigers. New England Tigers. I had seventh grade, you had eighth grade. And uh, now to look at you, you're now coaching for the Vikings. I mean, <laughs> dude, we used to drive 30 miles in your single cab. What was that? A 1980 pickup? 85 Chevy. 85. <laughs> Get Silverado. <a> graduation <laughs> gift. Yeah. And and now just to see you transcend up here, it's, it's unbelievable. And I was also kind of on the drive over thinking about your journey mm -hmm. and your journey from, we came in together at Dickinson State. You tore up your shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you would never play football again. Yeah unless you really want to have some bad things. So take <clears throat> us back right away to kind of when when you're sitting in your dorm room and basically, hey, you can't play football anymore. Yeah, it was uh, obviously a pretty bad deal. Yeah. And I, the one thing that sticks out to me the most was I remember calling Coach Hoffland after I had surgery after my last season, and I was just kind of talking to him about it. And he really just straight up asked me, like, hey, do you want to play catch with your kids someday and be able to throw them a ball? Sure. And that that hit me pretty hard. And that's, I think, really kind of when I realized that, you know, I wasn't going to be able to do it anymore type of deal because nobody ever thinks when they go to play in college that their career is going to get cut short from an injury. So yeah. because you never imagine anything like that, that's a hard pill to swallow when it when it does face you. Yeah, no, for sure. So you can't play. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. do you think, okay, I'm done? Or you're like, okay, maybe I coach. Uh, I really kind of thought that I was just going to be done. And then same person, Coach Hoffland, came to me and was like, hey, do you want to come coach the outside backers for us? Really? Like, that type of deal. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. I would love to do that. That's Hang awesome. out with Colby and yeah. Matt and those guys. You know what I mean? Shout Pat's out Matt McCoy. Shout out Matt McCoy, right? <laughs> Mr. Business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you you coach at Dickinson. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, how many were you there for two, three? I think I was there for two or three years, Okay, I think. And then I went to Wayne State okay. for a year, and then I came back to Dickinson for two. Like, Ten. I don't remember how many years I was a, like a student coach. Mm -hmm. I think it was maybe two seasons and I went to Wayne and then I came back for two years as full-time coach at Dickinson. Okay. And then when you're back at Dickinson, then you leave to go to Colorado, right? Yep. yep. How was that transition? Because that stadium looks... Now, this is, for everybody listening, this is pre-Coach Prime. Yeah. And then... But it's still a beautiful place. Boulder's an amazing city. Yeah. Man, it was... I, st I actually have it. I'd have to dig it up somewhere, but I have a journal that I wrote in every single day um, my first year at Colorado. And everything that I learned there was just unbelievable. And it was learning something new each and every single day. And, you know, I can't really speak for anybody out there, but there, I don't feel like there's very many professions out there where you can constantly learn something new every day, like in the coaching profession. Right. And that is exactly the experience that I got in Boulder my first year being at a Division One school. How many years were you at Boulder? Three years. Three years. Okay. So now you're a couple years into it. When do you talk to Coach Davis and get to Michigan State? Yeah. So at, I was at Colorado for two years. Um with Mike McIntyre. Okay. Mike McIntyre gets fired and then Mel Tucker comes in. So coach Tuck takes over as the head coach. I do one season with him and then he gets the Michigan state job. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I end up going to Michigan state with him from there. Okay. Can I ask you what that meeting's like? Like, is he come up to you and he's like, Hey, I'm going to Michigan state. You want to come with or? Well, it was, it was a crazy thing. Like everybody sees Twitter like, ah, oh, Midnight Mel, he le yeah. he left Colorado at midnight. You know what I mean? Well, that's when the news dropped. But the next morning we have a staff meeting at like 6 a.m. 
and the man is like hysterically crying in tears. The athletic director, Rick George, like won't let him talk to the team, like basically say, no, you took that job, like get the heck out of here type of deal. So like Tuck Damn. is in shambles, right? Yeah. Not sure if he made the right decision and he leaves the, he leaves the um, uh, coaches staff meeting and is like, I'll try to call everybody within 24 hours and let you know if I can bring you or not. Well, nobody gets a call within 24 <laughs> hours because when you take over as a head coach, you don't have, I mean, you don't even have 24 hours in a day to get all the things done that you need, obviously. So it was a couple weeks later before I got the call to go to Michigan State. So wow. um, it was, I mean, at least I got the call. There were some people that didn't. And yeah. They were out and whatever, got fired, didn't get retained at Colorado. You know, it's just part of it, but I was yeah. pretty lucky to get a call. So That's awesome. Yeah. So you go to Michigan State, obviously a, a big, big football program. Yeah. Great athletic school. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was that like? Because you guys had some success there. Yeah. So like if besides this job here, like I would put Boulder as like I would retire in Boulder right now. I, that was just like a hard first job to have because it set yeah. the bar so high. But then you get to Michigan State and that's like the first real like football town from a college athletic standpoint that was like they breathe football type mm -hmm. of deal. You know, like Boulder, it was just like a bunch of hippies that wanted to go hiking on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. You know, but in East Lansing, like everybody was at the game. Like our neighbors were like flying Spartan flags and they had like a Damn. Spartan S mowed into their yard. Like stuff like that is what you saw yeah. everywhere you went in East Lansing. So the the big 10 experience was man it was big time yeah. i mean it was big you know yeah like we had some success we went 11 and 2 one year and won the peach bowl you know we beat number six ranked michigan in the woodshed mm -hmm. and it was like the most electric like i get chills right now thinking about just how loud it was and they were chanting fu harbaugh <laughs> from 90 minutes on the clock pregame till the game started the student section was you know what i mean like yeah, that's what yeah. it that's what it was every weekend. Is is there a few, because you were on the sidelines for most of those yep. games, right? Yeah, every single one of them. Is there a few, is there like one game that really sticks out where you're like, Phew, I'll never, never experience that again? That one. The, the, the Michigan, Michigan one? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was, it was. <laughs> it was intense. It was huh? wild. Yeah, it's awesome. Crazy. They play here tomorrow night. Yep. So when this comes out, it'll be about a week behind, but yep. yeah, they're playing University of Minnesota. Yeah. That should be an okay game, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Okay, so after Michigan State, yeah. Then I go to Southern Illinois. Okay. For a year, and people are like, "Well, why did you leave Michigan State to go to Southern Illinois? Like Michigan State's Power Five, Southern Illinois is FCS, one AA. In the coaching world, like people aren't going to give you, <clears throat> excuse me, like a coaching your own position room, right? Without like some experience, like having your own room. So like I had to, you know go down a level to be given an opportunity. So that's really why I went to Southern Illinois. And how was that experience? It was tough, man. Yeah. It was it was the hardest year of my life. Really? One of the hardest years of my life from a coaching standpoint. Yeah. Just because everything was, it was just so different. Not what I was used to, like expectation wise, you know what I mean? A lot of those things, like it was just kind of hard to, you know, just get it all done without the resources mm -hmm. that you have at the power five level, mm -hmm. you know? So it was, it was very challenging, but yeah, I'm better for it. Great people there. And I definitely wouldn't be here if I didn't get that experience because Kevin O'Connell's not going to hire me if I don't have special teams coordinating experience. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not, if I'm the special teams analyst, like I was at Michigan state, he wouldn't be able to hire me here from mm -hmm. that role type of deal. So it's kind of like just like a basic thing in life. You go through your toughest, hardest points, and then there's a breakthrough and yeah. And then you get to, to kind of your dream job almost mm -hmm. hundred percent. So take me through the process of getting hired by the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. <laughs> as much as you can. Yeah, I will. Okay. Um, so the special teams coordinator and I, Matt Daniels, we were together as graduate assistants in 2017 at Colorado. He's a year older than me. Mm -hmm. He's like the youngest special teams coordinator in the NFL right now. Shout and, out Coach Daniel. Yeah. So <laughs> I did an internship here with the Vikings last year during training camp. And Matt and I are really close. And he, like we've always talked like, hey, the moment I get an opening, I'm going to hire you. 
And I was like, awesome, bet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. let's do it. So anyways, the coaching carousel, as people call it, like from December to February, March opens up. And I had a couple interviews um, and it didn't work out, that type of deal. Well, I'm going to a clinic at the University of Oklahoma in February. And I get down there and my former boss, Mike McIntyre, calls me on Friday afternoon and says, Dolman, we have an outside backer, special teams coordinator job open. Do you want the job? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. He's like, okay, I'll give you a call back um, and I'll let you know when we can get you down here, blah, blah, blah. Like the job is mine. Yeah. And uh, a day later, Matt, my now boss, calls me and says, hey, so-and-so, my assistant left. The job is yours. Oh, my. <laughs> So I'm sitting in Norman, Oklahoma, oh. supposed to speak at this clinic. Yeah. And I'm like fielding like all these calls. Both of these guys are like calling me, right? But the here's the kicker, and this will kind of tie in the whole story. Matt Daniels played for Mike McIntyre. Oh, so the wow. guy at FIU who offered me the job first coached the guy that is my boss now. So I call my boss at Southern Illinois, and I'm like, hey, this is what's going on. Here's kind of the timeline. We'll see if it works out that way. Well, anyways, Coach Matt Daniels calls Coach Mike McIntyre and says, hey, I want to hire Dolman. And he's like, no, wait, I want to hire Dolman. <laughs> but Coach <laughs> Mack is like, I don't want to take this NFL opportunity away from Dolman. So you guys go through your process. So I had like a 30-minute interview with the Vikings. And what it was, I mean, it was just like KO and I got on a Zoom call. He's like, hey, DG, how you doing? Good to see you again. Yeah, take me through your install. Who's your family? How many kids you got? Yeah, remind me of that stuff again. And so we did that. We get off the call and Matt calls me. He's like, bro, you killed it. Like the job is yours. I just got to interview these other two guys. Well, Coach Mack is like, can't wait anymore for my decision to go to Florida International. Oh, no. And I'm like, I can't lose this job. Like what's going on, right? So Coach Mack is like, I need to know on Friday what's going to happen. We're like, okay, cool. Matt's like, I can get an answer by Friday. Friday comes around and Coach KO like, doesn't answer mm. and like matt daniels can't get a hold of him nothing so like monday comes around and i've got to go to florida international so i talked to coach mack at eight o'clock in the morning he's like hey i'm going to send you your contract at 10 30 and you're going to sign it and we'll get you down here to miami tomorrow i'm like okay perfect wow i was like man you know yeah it sucks i didn't get the nfl job but i got a really good job with a guy that i like yeah 45 minutes later, Matt Daniels calls me. He's like, hey, the job's yours. I talked to KO. He was at the spa all weekend. That's why he wasn't <laughs> answering his phone. Oh, damn. So, so what'd you do? Call the other dude? And yeah, I, I called Coach Mack and I was like, hey, Coach Mack, the Vikings called back. It's the job's mine. Just like they said it was yeah. going to be. So he's like, okay, thanks for letting me know. On to the next. Oh, wow. So so then and you just pack up the family and, and uh, start looking for places? So I packed up. What was that? Was, that was like a Monday and they flew me to Indianapolis the next day for the combine. Wow. And then I flew back to Southern Illinois and then flew back to Minneapolis like the next day after I was in Indy and I got right to work in like early, late February, early March. And then the family didn't come up, come up until April. When you get to the combine mm -hmm. a day after being hired by the Vikings and you step on that field and you, do you just catch your breath and be like, dude, yeah, it was a pretty, it was undescribable. Is that is that just like one of the, that's got to be an insane feeling, dude. A crazy feeling. Because you went through all this turmoil, all mm -hmm. this like hard times, all this different coaching, you know, yep. six, seven years of coaching, little jobs here and there. Well, not little jobs, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like bouncing different around, jobs, yeah. bouncing around. And boom, you are with the best players in the world. Mm -hmm. And and just, I mean, that's got to overtake your heart, man. Yeah, it was I, yeah I, it's hard to describe yeah. like i just i sent a text to my parents like of of lucas oil stadium at the combine like thank you for what you instilled in me for <laughs> me to be able to be at a place like this dude that's amazing it yeah you had to take a step back and just like pinch yourself every single minute you walked in there yeah um and and i, I want to give a shout out to your wife mm -hmm. because obviously you know being a coach's wife is tough but i mean that's got to be a i mean you got to celebrate with her too yeah she's the she's the ceo of the gibson family yeah. like without her there's there definitely is no dolman just because i mean she 
she does it all. Like yeah. coaches' wives really don't get enough credit for the burdens that they pick up and carry. And yeah, they just they do it all, man. So yeah, she's amazing. Okay, so you do that. You start kind of catching a rhythm here in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, start going through everything. When's when when you get to like kind of preseason and everything, and you're going through training camp. Mm-hmm. Like just now, when I walked in the building, yeah, first person we see is Tony Romo. Yeah, you know he's doing the game. T- he's doing the game Sunday. You yeah. see, I see Tony Romo, and you just look at me, and you're, you just lift your. I was like, yeah, welcome to the friggin' league, buddy. Yeah, no doubt. What, what's a moment that you had that like you walked like and you didn't try to, to fanboy too much, but you're like, dude, I'm here. It's funny because a lot of people think that moment is when. I meet JJ or Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. But that moment for me when I was like a complete fanboy is when I met our wide receivers coach, Keenan McCardell. Dude, McCardell, <laughs> like, yeah, bro. Keenan's my guy. Yeah. Like watching him as a kid, like he was that dude. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And now I get to work with him every single day and just his smile and his energy. It's just What's like- What's he like? He's just smiling, just happy, just great coach, awesome person. Like there's not a- bad person in this building yeah like i've been and worked at places with people that like this guy sucks you know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, like that yeah. type of deal but like there's not anybody like that here everybody's great gosh yeah, so Keenan, Keenan cardell dude the, the man goat. the goat okay so you're working with all these great people now now what's a, a training camp like for the minnesota vikings take me through from a coaching aspect yeah so from a coaching aspect we do these shout out to coach uh marquise johnson our strength coach we do these okay. hard ass staff strength workouts really at like six in the morning anybody can come through and what kind of lifts are you doing the same the same stuff the players are doing is 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 o'connell is is no he 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 doesn't do it he He works out on his own okay yeah but i mean yeah it's it sucks it's hard what (laughs) yeah so so the workout would start at six so i would probably wake up at like 4 30 4 45 5 o'clock depending on how i was feeling get in get your workout in go grab breakfast, um, hustle up to my office, just kind of put the finishing touches on one of my meetings that I have at like eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning. Then we go from like meetings, offense, defense, special teams, maybe a team meeting. Then we'll go to the field for a walkthrough for like 50 minutes. Then we'll go have lunch. Then we're back out on the field for practice at like two. And then special teams meeting like four o'clock, five o'clock, go to dinner, come back O and D meetings and then the coaches normally stay and get practice ready for the next day. And then you just wake up and do it all over again. So you do that for from July 24th to August 30th. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So then preseason rolls around Mm -hmm. and this facility you guys have, where do you guys do your training camp at first off? Uh, Here. It's here. Okay. Yeah. Because I know like the chiefs, they'd go to travel to St. Tom Joseph's and a couple other. Yep. So we stay here. The team stays right in the team hotel right over there. And, we're here. We don't dude, travel anywhere, which is great. I was driving up to this place, and it's like it's Taj Mahal. Dude, NFL it doesn't even facilities. feel real. Yeah, it's big like time. It's one of the nicest places, like you were saying, in the NFL. But yeah, now you get to the regular season. Mm-hmm. Okay, preseason's done. You got your fifty. You got your final roster. What's it like going from the speed from preseason to regular season as a coach? Man, it just it ramps up tenfold. Yeah, because the preseason games, like, I don't want to say they don't matter because they do, but it's just like the intensity definitely increases for the regular season. Like in the NFL, you can't lose games that you're supposed to win. You, I mean, you can't leave any stone unturned right. from a preparation game planning standpoint. So you're, I mean, you're grinding early in the week, you know, like Mondays is game review day. So players come in, watch the film, take care of their bodies, that type of deal. Mm-hmm. Coaches are there till, I mean, midnight, one o'clock. Tuesday, player off day. Coaches are there till midnight, one o'clock, two a.m. That's when like most of the coaches stay the night here at the office on Tuesday nights, wow. just because the turnaround is so yeah, quick, yeah. type of deal. And then Wednesday is your first practice day. Then Tuesday, or excuse me, Wednesday, Thursday practice days. Friday is like a fast Friday practice. Saturday walkthrough, Sunday game yeah dude yeah and so when you come back um after like uh just like kind of a tough 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 game mm-hmm. in the locker room and, and you're with some of these guys are are you trying to 
like as an assistant, you're a special teams assistant. So what do you have to feel like your role out or what are you trying to do? Are you just trying to amp the guys up or are you trying to try to feel your role or after the game? Yeah. Or, I mean, these guys are all like elite competitors. Yeah. And really like, you know, we started the season 0 and 3, like Mm -hmm. nobody, I mean, said anything to each other. Like they were that pissed off. Right. You know, like KO talked to the team about what we did and didn't do and why we didn't get it done type of deal. But it's like, I mean, I'm a competitor too. Like I was mad. Like, yeah, you just leave and you go get changed, you shower and and just head home. Yep. And then you went to Carolina last weekend. Got a dub. Got a dub. Great feeling. Don't ever take ones for granted, baby. I know. And, And it was against Adam Thielen. Yep. Uh, sh- he was shout out coach. Th- I mean Adam Thielen because he was like a local kid mm-hmm. played for the Vikes and went to Carolina. So that was a big, uh, big dub, man. Yeah, for sure. And then this week you got the Chiefs rolling into town. Yep. And uh, I mean we know what what they're all about. But I read a crazy stat today that like the Vikings are undefeated in week fives or something at home in the last twenty two years or something. Dude, like that. oh my goodness! Here we go. Here we go. Um. Anyways, so take me through kind of your pregame. You obviously come, what time, say the game's at noon. Mm-hmm. You guys stay at the team hotel Saturday night? Uh, the players do. Players the coaches do. stay at their houses. Okay. Okay, so you get uh, get to the stadium, what time? Uh, like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I usually okay. ride to the facility, to the stadium with my family, which is awesome. Yeah, Never done that before. Park in our like family parking spot and damn. I go in the stadium and they go to like their coaches wives tailgate thing that they do all the kids run around that type of deal and then i get i usually go into the stadium and i usually just go run on the field just kind of just burn some energy and just kind of calm some nerves then i just like shower and get changed for the game and then i go out and i start working out like our specialists and then like our gunners, our returners, um, our position, like the very important positional players on special teams. Okay. And then um, I, I wanted to talk about this. I'm kind of jumping around a little no, bit. But I, want to, I want to talk about our guy, Paul Allen. <laughs> PA. Shout boy. out PA. Yeah. One of my favorite human beings of all time. Yeah. Um, doing a podcast with him tomorrow. But what's it? It's got to be a good feeling when, when you as a coach – Guys like Paul Allen, guys like you know Ko, they all they know you. Mm-hmm. What's that feeling like for you, like a, a small a kid from South Dakota getting this kind of opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I don't take it lightly. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just because, really, when it comes to like my coaching career and why I coach, like I'm big on being the person I needed when I was younger, mm-hmm. being the person I needed when I was in junior high, high school, the college kid that had a banged up shoulder. You know what I mean? Like just trying to speak life into everybody that I come into contact with. And I've been fortunate enough that there's people surrounding me now that are like the people that you just mentioned that are pouring into me as well. You know what I mean? So it's, it's been great. What, what are, with that said, with what are your, some of your future goals? I mean, is this kind of, is this, obviously there's some, you could maybe be a a special teams coordinator moving forward, Yeah, you know, defensive coordinator, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. What's some goals that that Coach Gibson has? Yeah, I think right now, just do the, I mean, right now I got to be the best in where my feet are at and that's right here and as an assistant. But I mean, long-term, I would love to be a special teams coordinator in the NFL, but like big time, like I want to be a defensive coordinator in the NFL. That's like, that's like, at the top of the pedestal. Who's the D coordinator here right now? Brian Flores. What's he like? He's my best friend. <laughs> really? He's the man. Dude, I love Flo. Flo is great. He was he was a good head coach. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. What, so what is it like when you meet Coach Flo, dude? You just like get his like tenacious Brooklyn, New York like vibe out of him instantly. He's just like, it's just like pouring out of him. You know what I mean? That yeah. just charisma and confidence and passion but then relatability. Yeah. You know, a lot of these guys, players included, like they're no different than you and I, like right. you can sit down and have a conversation with them and their experiences, all of those things. And they're like, truly like, they want to know about you as well. Yeah. You know, so it's like. It, they genuinely it, care about yeah. you. Yeah. Which is a good feeling. Yeah, for sure. It's a good sign of a good organization. Yeah. Okay. So this is a question that, that I was thinking about too on my way over when when you meet guys like Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins and and all these different types of players, what is your mentality towards them? Just treat treat them like another player, obviously. Or, or what do you what what are they like, Dalman? Are they personable? <laughs> what are they like? 
oh yeah like jj has great energy about mm-hmm. him you know what i mean so hey what's up dg good to meet you blah blah blah, blah. you know kirk is like a very formal um personable guy you know like i'll never forget meeting kirk because it was after like one of the ota practices he comes right up to me he's like you know i saw you were introduced as a new coach today in the team meeting uh tell me where you're from where you've been at blah 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 blah. like kirk but, cousin said that yeah too? but he's like but i did hear you were a michigan state spartan for oh, a couple of years you know yeah. what I mean? so it's like I yeah i forgot he was a qb there yeah, yeah. so that was that's so why what'd was, you say we're like yeah 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 answered you know told him everything and so now like kirk and i like usually we eat dinner on like monday nights he's normally at the facility he's there so me, me him uh our specialist and our special teams co- coordinator like we usually like sit down and eat on monday nights and talk and chop it up so kirk is great great dude awesome i liked him and i thought he was a good quarterback but then i watched that uh quarterback show on netflix mm-hmm. with him mahomes and Mariota. yep Dude, I he's like my one of my favorites now. Yeah, he's a, a great dude. I mean, just showing like what he goes through on the day to day basis and mm-hmm. like all the extra stuff is is amazing. And he seems like such a stand up guy. And in one of those episodes, like at the end, it shows him like singing to his kids, mm-hmm. like such a family oriented guy. Yeah, no doubt. And like, it's it, I'm glad that that show sh- like shed light on just like his process because he talks about his habits and his process a lot with the team as Mm -hmm. our leader and quarterback. And I think everybody can learn from those little nuggets when it comes to mastering your craft and life and whatever your, your job or role may be. Yeah, no, totally. And I mean, just, I saw on Twitter the other day too, that he didn't have tickets to the Minnesota twins game and he just went, Yeah, took his family. It was like afternoon playoff game. He just went, sat with regular fans. Correct. Being a muggle for a little bit. Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) Exactly, dude. Um, okay, now on Sundays, are you on the sideline or are you in the booth? I'm on the field, yep. Really? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what is that like? Do you know the uh, the scene on Friday Night Lights when they're in the state championship game and Gary Gaines, the coach, is like, Ivory, what's it like out there? They're big, they're fast, they're strong, yeah. they're fast. <laughs> like, that's exactly... <laughs> yeah. Like, it is... It's intense. Yeah. And it's fast and it is literally a car crash every single play. Like it is, it's brutal. Yeah. Like the speeds at which this game is played at, it is unbelievable. And like, can I cuss on here? Yeah, of course. The shit talking. Yeah. <laughs> it is outrageous. It's, insane. it's hilarious. I, I was just telling, <clears throat> I was, yeah, I was just telling my girlfriend about how she was like, this girl on TikTok's famous um, and her, her, uh, her husband is an offensive lineman for the Vikings. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, I bet they talk so much shit to him about his wife being famous. She goes, <laughs> they don't do that. I said, yeah, they do. But oh, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's bad. Oh yeah, they're funny. They're it's, funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I also wanted to to touch base with you, and when you put on your headset, you're like, wow, it sounds as clear as like my headset on Sundays. <laughs> what is that headset on Sundays like? It it depends on what channel you're on, <laughs> offense so, or defense. Yeah, they're all different, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. you're usually on defense or? Uh, I flip to both. So I have offense, defense, and special teams, but I flip back and forth between offense and defense based on who who's on the field just situationally. So we're no, we know what to be prepared and ready for. Like God. whether or not to send out the punt team or yeah. pressure return team, that type of deal. And and I mean, just to to hear that, <clears throat> dude, to, to hear the, the relay yeah. information like that has got to be, You've yeah. seen it from a whole different... The yeah. money cannot buy that. No, like to hear an offensive play call and then like me who isn't an NFL quarterback try to repeat that call. Yeah. There's no way. It's that tough? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> really? Imagine the hardest vocabulary test you've ever had and you've got to like play a game of telephone with that. Really, with crowds yelling at you and... Mm-hmm. And Eleven a, and guys want to kill and you. And a play clock going off. <gasps> and then like the play caller like yelling in your ear like different alerts to look out for in case you need to kill that play. Before the snap? Oh yeah. Really? So like I'll give you a play, hey, I write power. But yeah. then the play caller's like, hey, watch out for that boundary <laughs> safety. He he could be blitzing. If it happens, ch- check this. Like yeah, yeah, that type yeah. of deal. And you're like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like um, all of it. Really? Yeah. So no wonder it's kind of a it's a high stress job, especially QB one. Yeah. Who uh, middle linebacker wears it on defense? Yep. Who's your middle linebacker here? Jordan Hicks. He's the green dot. Oh, that's what, that's Hicks. what they call the like the Mike in the mm-hmm. NFL. They call him the green dot. What 
a guy that that I don't think gets enough praise and is one of the my <clears> favorite <throat> players in the NFL is Harrison Smith. Hitman he, Harry, as hit, PA calls him. That's my guy. Was he like at practice? Um like a cool hand Luke type of vibe. Like yeah. about his business, like laser focused, um, like neutral, not too high, not too low, and just gonna do his job type of deal. I've seen him blow up some people. <laughs> yeah. Bro, blow him up. No doubt. He, he is phenomenal. Yeah, he's big time. Harry and I bond over talking about like our favorite 90s kids cartoons and TV shows. Oh, really? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. I You know what I almost wore here? Because I went to Shields and I uh, they had on sale for 85 bucks, Mike Bibby jersey. <laughs> Mike Bibby. Dude, I was like, I got to wear this to <laughs> see Gibby. But. So Mike Bibby's nephew is Byron Murphy. Really? Our corner. He played Arizona yeah. last year. Yep. Yeah. So... We had a jersey competition hosted by Kirk Cousins and Byron B. Murph actually wore like a whole Mike Bibby get up no. for Jersey Day and he won it. Dude, he's Mike Bibby. Yeah. Wow. They I mean they look alike, just light skinned dudes. Yeah, he had yeah, a headband yeah. on, like it was it was it's great. It's a small world. Small bro. world. Well, uh, I don't want to hold you up too long. I know you got a family to get back to, but uh Something I ask everybody on swim lessons is how they kind of overcome the tough times, how they get through it. And I mean, you're, you are so far my favorite guest just because we kind of grew up together and no to doubt. see you get to this part of your life has, has been amazing, mm -hmm. man. And, and uh, I really want to know, I've been asking, waiting a long time to ask this question, but what's something that, that helps Dalma Gibson get through the tough times? Because they're not all great. Yep. What's, what helps you get through the tough ones? I think my, um, gosh, that's a tough one, Dal. Take your I time, homie. Yeah, I think just like my stillness and the chaos probably because I think a lot of us, you know, have those chaotic moments in life. But I think where I've been able to, you know, get through the fog of it all is just to be able to just be still in that moment. And like my faith is big, so I rely on that a lot. Um, Yeah, so probably like my stillness and my faith. Yeah. You know. I think that's probably got me the farthest. That's awesome. What's yours? Can I ask you? I don't, uh, probably a lot like that, but, but lately I've been, you know, we were talking about this before, before we got on the mic, but I, I haven't been, I have been going out as much, mm -hmm. you know, I've kind of been limiting myself with, with the partying and the drinking and all that stuff. So I don't kind of threw that out the window and I've kind of started this new role and I've noticed like I'm really sharper and fresher. Mm -hmm. So I would say just kind of learning to say no. Yeah. Be a big part. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't learn to say no with this podcast. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're my guy. I couldn't. Dude. I've owed you this for a I long time. I appreciate it. Well, like uh, shout out to our to our homie Brock Wigert. Yes. When when we when you first got hired, he calls me and I go, Hey Brock. And he goes, Did you see the news? Gibby got it, man. I'm like, Yeah, I know, I seen that. And he goes, I ain't going to no Vikings games unless I get family passes. <laughs> Dude, uh, it was the best. And uh, uh, those are those are still on the layaway for you, Brock. <laughs> <laughs> Brock, he he's a uh, shout out Brock Wiggs. He we played college football with him <clears throat> at Dickinson. He's the best. He's a diehard Vikings fan. Yeah, you know who uh, I saw a couple weeks ago at a game. Who? Colin Baumgart. No way. Yeah, and that's like another reason why like I'm so grateful to have this job so close to home. Is like there's actually people that I know that are Vikings fans. Yeah. So I was like down on the field pregame, and I hear like somebody screaming my name. And I'm like, what? What, what, what am I hearing? And this? I turn yeah. around and I see Baumgart's big ass biceps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> They're yeah. still the same, right? And I was like, dang. Like, So we went and talked and that that deal too. I actually saw Sean Alder's parents at the Seattle preseason game. Really? They were at the game. They came down like, it was, it's, yeah, it's been great. Shout out to Sean Alder. <laughs> yeah. He's the man. Yeah. He's coaching too now, right? It's, I think so. Yeah. 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 So He's what did Colin say? Did you go over and talk to him? Oh yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Him? No, I sat and talked to him for like, five, 10 minutes. Really? Yeah. It was good to see him. I, I mean, it's gotta be a good feeling to know that so many people, I mean, cause you're from South Dakota, yep. small town <clears throat> and uh, so many people in your corner. Yeah, for sure. Just wanting you to do big things. Yeah. And they would feel that way even <clears throat> if you weren't with the Vikings. Yeah. And like, I can't thank people enough for the support. Like there's people that are supporting me that like, I don't even know about, you know, and like, I don't have Facebook or Instagram, but like my parents and my family, like tell me like when I got this job, like about, all the people that were sending their congratulations and well wishes, you know, that type of thing to me. So like, thank you so much. But it's, yeah, it just sounded like there was a huge like pouring of just 
just blessings, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, even even PA <clears throat> when I met him, Paul Allen, this past summer, I was like, yeah, I went to college with with Coach Domingos. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, the new the new kid, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he knew you right away, dude. Yeah. I mean, you're famous. You're yeah. coming along. I don't know how famous I am. You're, you're getting there, bro, and I'm pulling for you. Appreciate you. What? Give me a. Give me a. Before we close here, we got a few extra minutes. Give me like a rundown of the rest of the year. Yeah, rundown of the rest of the year. So we've got a divisional game next week at Chicago. That's a big one. Big one. Got to get it done. Played well last night. Yeah, they did. Threw the ball like 60 times. Dude. So they're getting hot. Yeah. Not when we want them to, but yeah, yeah, that's all right. Um, got San Fran Monday night. Is that here? That's here. That- Monday night football. Yeah. Is that going to be your first Monday night football game as a coach in the NFL? Yes. <sighs> yeah. Dude. Like we went to Thursday night football at Philly. That was crazy. It was like star studded. Were Philly fans as bad as they say they are? Uh, no. No? Yeah. Yeah. What's the dude who played for Philly? Like Invincible? Oh, Vince Papali. Yeah. Dude, like, the GOAT. Yeah. yeah, I thought they were more like that. Just yeah. kind of nice, just hardworking, blue-collar mm-hmm. people, that type of deal. But like at the Thursday night game, like I got to meet Mike Vick and... What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You told you sent me a Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. How was that? Was What's pretty, he like? He was great. Chill. Just easy going. Mike just, Vick, bro. Mike Vick. The Madden cover GOAT. Like if you wanted a dub back in 04 you on Madden... With <laughs> you, the Falcons you played with you the Falcons and you had Mike Vick. Mike Vick. <laughs> Correct. Bro. Um, okay, so you got to do Monday Night Football here. That's going to be sick as hell. Mm-hmm. Niners are a great football team. Yeah, they, I heard they just got Randy Gregory, so they're loading Ooh. up. Yeah. yeah. And then hopefully making a playoff run. No doubt. Got to. Well, bro, I appreciate you. I love you, man. Love you too, you're, brother. You're the GOAT, and uh, I'm really looking forward to watching you coach uh, from the sidelines. I'm sitting Chiefs sidelines, but uh, mm, mm, mm. If, if you got time before the game, yeah, I'd love to get sure. a picture. Absolutely. We'll, we'll meet up. All right, I appreciate it, man. That's a wrap. Dalma Gibson. Love you.